Hello, everyone. Thank you for the introduction. Um, so this is a work about building um, uh, diffusion layers for, well, typically uh, block ciphers. Um, okay. Um, so we have general criteria for the security of block ciphers. Uh, diffusion, confusion. Uh, diffusion means that uh, every bit of the output must depend on every bit of the plain text and every bit of the key. This can be uh, very simple dependencies, so linear functions are usually used. And confusion means that there should be a complex relation between uh, the plain text and the ciphertext. Uh, so for this, we use nonlinear uh, operations, which we call S boxes. Um, and uh, a very typical way to design such a block cipher is the uh, SPN structure. Um, what is this for? <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Uh, here we have two rounds on an SPN structure. So one uh, in one round, you have uh, uh, first a confusion layer with uh, small S boxes applied in parallel, then a diffusion layer with a big uh, diffusion matrix um, applied on the whole state, and then uh, uh, a run constant, uh, run the uh, run key addition, and you iterate this as many times as you need to get uh, your security. Here we will be focusing on this L uh, diffusion layer. Um, so uh, typically we will try to uh, resist differential and linear attacks. So here I will, I will mostly foc focus on differential attacks. The idea of a differential attack is, well, uh, you look at the input X, the output Y, and you look at what happens when you have uh, a difference on in the input A, what uh, difference on the output B you get. And if for some differences A, B, you have a very uh, high probability that this difference A on the input gives a difference B on the output, uh, then uh, you can distinguish your cipher from a random permutation and possibly attack. Um, so the probability of such uh, differential attacks depends on uh, the S-box with a certain function of the S-box and on uh, the diffusion layer. Um, and actually what gives uh, the security against uh, these kind of attacks are active S-boxes. What we call active S-boxes are the S-boxes which which, when you have a difference on the input A, you receive a non-zero input difference. Um, and the rule, then, of the diffusion matrix is to make sure that as many as possible um, uh, S-boxes are active. That's what this uh, formula here gives. Um, so if we look a bit uh, closer, uh, here we usually consider uh, counting the number of active S-boxes in uh, two successive uh, layers of S-boxes. So you have one big diffusion uh, function, which can be seen uh, in two ways, either as a big um, function on the whole state or uh, as a matrix on words, uh, because you can consider that you have uh, four input and four output words in this case on the size of the S-box. And since it's linear, we usually consider it to be a matrix. Um, and uh, in this case, what we want is to have as many active S-boxes as possible which means uh, basically that we want as many input words to be active and as many output words to be active as possible, so to have differences. Uh, this is exactly what the branch number captures for differential attacks and for linear attacks is the same thing, we just use the transpose of the matrix. So I'm talking about, um, okay, so uh, here for instance, we can have, um, uh, we can have uh, these as boxes active so here we'll have five uh, active S-boxes in two rounds. That's how we count. And the best we can do is, well, having uh, one, uh, if we have only one active S-box on the input, we cannot have more than uh, all the output words active. So this is the best we can get. And the diffusion matrices which reach uh, this optimum are called uh, MDS because they are equivalent to a maximum distance separable codes. Um, so I'm talking about matrices uh, because we represent this as matrices usually. Matrices on a finite field. So we define um, a primitive element X on F2 to the N. And then the words and the coefficients can be considered um, as uh, elements of this field. So polynomials in X with binary coefficients. And we usually represent them too uh, with integers by just setting that uh, X is equal to two. So we have a binary decomposition of an integer. Um, uh, we get these kind of matrices here, four by four matrix. This is the mixed column from the AES. And this one is MDS, so it's optimal. 
And the good thing is we can characterize which matrices are uh, optimal, are MDS or not. Um, on this m uh, matrix, uh, the idea is uh, that uh, matrix will be MDS if and only if all of its minors are non-zero, the minors being the determinants of the square sub-matrices. So uh, in particular, the determinant of the whole matrix must be non-zero and the uh, coefficients of the matrix must be non-zero. So for example, a binary matrix cannot be uh, MDS because it will have zeros. Um, there has been a lot of previous work on this topic, not to find MDS matrices because we know some, but to try to reduce the cost of these MDS uh, matrices. Um, I will not go through all of it, but just a few examples. Uh, one which is nice, I think, is uh, recursive matrices uh, in which you have a trade-off between the, uh, the, the size of the implementation and the time you need to, to implement. Um, if you don't implement an the MDS matrix, you just implement a small matrix A of which a power uh, I is MDS, and then you iterate I times to get an MDS diffusion layer. What has also been done a lot is trying to optimize the coefficients of uh, the matrix. What do I mean by this? Well, if you look at this matrix, we can imagine that we are going to do a matrix vector multiplication uh, for which we have a fixed number of XORs, and we have to do uh, multiplications by each of the elements. Uh, each of the coefficients of the matrix. So if we have coefficients which are lightweight to multiply in the finite field, that's better. So one, two, and three are very nice in this case. Um, but since the search space is huge, people usually look at structured types of matrices in uh, uh, subspaces where we think are many MDS matrices, and then basically try to uh, look at all the coefficients and take the best ones. What is also doable is to uh, go the other way around uh, get out of the finite field, so had to have a larger search space. And in that case, maybe if we just take that the inputs are binary vectors and the um, coefficients are n by n matrices, maybe we have something less costly than finite field multiplications. Um, so the big question here, I'm co talking about cost, what, how do we evaluate this cost? Well, the real cost of a diffusion uh, layer would be the number of bitwise XORs, number of operations that we need to implement uh, this layer uh, with the best implementation. Um, but we don't really know how to evaluate this, so usually we use estimates. The one which has been the most used in the lit literature is the XOR count, which is a quite naive way to count the number of bitwise XORs by simply looking at the Hamming weight of the binary matrix. Uh, the problem of this is that in, in this kind of implementations, you cannot reuse uh, intermediate values. Um, and there has been some other uh, kinds of metrics considered, like local optimizations. Uh, as I just uh, mentioned, trying to consider that the cost is the cost of multiplying the matrix. So you have a fixed number of XORs, and then you need to uh, have the cost of uh, multiplying, uh, multiplying sorry, uh, by each uh, of the coefficients of the matrix and then you try to reduce the cost of uh, each coefficient independently, so it's local optimizations. And um, what has been considered uh, recently now is global optimization. Um, so there, there has been a, a, another work than ours in parallel, done by a team from Bochum, so Kranz et al. Um, what they, uh, what they did is um, they used hardware synthesis tools, straight line programming, um, to try to uh, find uh, good circuits to implement uh, binary, binary matrices. Um, we use also a global approach um, uh, in which the idea is that you look, uh, you try to find uh, an implementation of the matrix as a circuit and you try to find uh, this implementation with the least number of operations. Uh, and in our case, we only use operations on words, not on, uh, on bits because it's too costly. Um, so if we compare these, these kind of metrics, um, here for this ma matrix with the, 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 the count uh, as a m matrix multiplication, we would need six multiplications by two, two multiplications by three, and six exhausts to perform the matrix multiplication. But actually this circuit here does exactly the same operation, but by reusing some intermediate values, we just need one multiplication by two and five exhausts, so it's is the metric that we will use. Um, and actually, we will get out of the finite field. Uh, what we will do is replace this 
multiplication by two here in the finite field by any linear mapping alpha on F2 to the n. And then we will optimize in two steps. First, we will try to find a matrix in alpha which is lightweight. And then we'll try to find the lightest implementation of this alpha which gives an MDS matrix. Uh, so what we have in the end is not necessarily a field, it's a polynomial ring uh, in general. And uh, so basically the, the, the words and the coefficients uh, are not elements of a finite field, they are not uh, polynomials in a primitive element X, they are polynomials with binary coefficients in alpha. Um, but what is nice is that we can characterize exactly which uh, matrices are interesting, it, we, which formal matrices in alpha are interesting, uh, which ones can give MDS instantiations. Um, we will call them formally MDS. Um, it simply corresponds to once again having all the minors of the matrix, which is a formal matrix uh, with uh, non-zero. Um, these minors being now polynomials in alpha. And uh, we know, we can prove that uh, if uh, the minors are non-zero, uh, then we can have an uh, MDS instantiation and otherwise it's not possible. So really, we miss no one. Um, and then we did, uh, so in two steps, uh, the rest of the talk would be in two steps. First, trying to find uh, lightweight formal MDS matrices and then trying to uh, instantiate them the lightest way possible. So our research space is this for the formal matrices. Uh, we uh, ran a search of a small circuits trying to find the, the first one, which is MDS, basically. Um, the operations that we use are only word-wise operations. Uh, so word-wise XORs, uh, this linear mapping alpha, which is undefined, and uh, copy operations on words. Um, and we have a few registers to, so to store the values. We need at least uh, one register per word. And we have a few more registers to allow for more complex operations. Um, the main idea of this search will, uh, is that we use a graph-based search with a dextra algorithm. Um, so a node of this graph would be a matrix represented by a sequence of operations, so a circuit and an edge would be adding an operation to the node. So in this case, the lightest circuit for an MDS matrix would be the shortest path from the root, which is the identity, to an MDS matrix. So it's just a dextra algorithm, basically. Um, uh, this search is very costly, in particular in terms of memory. For uh, three by three matrices, uh, it was very fast, very easy. But for four by four matrices, it was already very, uh, um, not that much time consuming, but memory consuming. And for four by, uh, five by five matrices, it's just not doable at all. And what we get in the end is a collection of MDS matrices, formerly MDS matrices, uh, with a trade-off between the cost of the implementation and the depth of the circuit. So the depth uh, being related to how long, uh, how much time it takes to perform this uh, diffusion layer. Um, so if we look at what it looks like, basically it's like this, we spawn a big, big graph, <coughs> and then each, uh, each edge just adds an operation. Um, we did a lot of optimization for this because it's not doable just like that. At many levels, we did optimizations. One of the big ones is rather than using an, a Dijkstra algorithm, we use an A-star approach. Uh, A-star is a guided uh, Dijkstra in which rather than having for each node its weight, which is the weight from the origin, we also add an estimate of how much it would take to get to the objective. So here our estimate is how far are we from an MDS matrix. And what we use is simply that if we have a column with a zero in our matrix, then it cannot be part of an MDS matrix. And if we have linearly dependent columns, they cannot be part of an MDS matrix together. So what we use in the end uh, as our estimate is um, the rank of the matrix without the columns which contain zeros. Uh, so we need at least k minus m wordwise XORs to get to an MDS matrix, where k is the number of words and m the rank of this matrix. And the result is that it runs much faster with much less memory. So using this, we get a lot of uh, results like uh, 20 uh, very good M MDS, uh, formerly MDS matrices. Um, and now we need to instantiate them. 
so we have formally MDS matrix matrices in alpha, and now we want to find the best instantiation for this alpha, uh, which is the one which will give something MDS and uh, lightweight. Um, and the good thing is we can characterize very efficiently if an instantiation will be MDS or not. So the basic way to do this would be to just take a linear mapping A, evaluate the matrix uh, at point A, and see if all the minors are non-singular, which is just the basic definition of an MDS uh, matrix. Um, but actually, we can start by computing the minors directly on the formal uh, matrices. So here I denote them uh, Mij, the formal minors, in, uh, which are polynomials in alpha. And then we can evaluate these poly polynomials at point A, and the, it is an equivalence uh, for the instantiation to be MDS or for these minors to be non-singular. It's not obvious, but it works. And actually, we can go even further than that using the minimal polynomial of uh, the linear mapping A, mu of A. Uh, we have an equivalence. Uh, the instantiation will be MDS if and only if the minimal polynomial is a prime with all the formal minors. So this is very efficient because when we want to instantiate, we just have to compute all the formal minors M of, uh, Mij once for the matrix, or the formal matrix, and then for each instance uh, that we want to try, we just compute its minimal polynomial and see if it's uh, prime with all the formal minors. And uh, actually, we can do this just by theory, uh, by going back to the finite field. So what we want is to find a linear mapping A uh, such that its minimal polynomial is prime with all the formal minors. And if we just look at multiplications in a finite field, we can do this. If we just take D uh, greater than the degrees of all the formal minors, then if we choose uh, pi, an irreducible polynomial of degree D, well, just by construction, pi is relatively prime with all the formal minors. And so if we take for A the companion matrix of pi, well, this will give an MDS instantiation. And this uh, A just corresponds to a finite field multiplication. And which, what is nice is that we know how to do this at a low cost, because if we pick for pi just a few coefficients, uh, for instance, a trinomial, well, this can be implemented with just one rotation and one, one bitwise uh, XOR. So almost nothing. Uh, so that's what we did, and that's what we did. Um, in the end, these are the matrices that we used for A. Um, we just use these four matrices. It's not obvious that it works for everything, but in our case, for all of our four mod matrices, just these four uh, instances of uh, A were enough to instantiate. Uh, so at this point, we need to fix the size of the words that we are working on. Only now do we need to do this. Uh, all the rest of the time, we had words on F2 to the N. Now we need to fix N. So we chose two sizes which are typical for S-boxes, 4 bits and 8 bits. And um, we, for, for all of them, we instantiated uh, using A4 here, uh, which is just the companion matrix uh, of an irreducible polynomial. So exactly as I, as I told you, it's a finite field multiplication. Uh, here it's its inverse. For uh, 8 bits, we cannot have uh, irreducible polynomials, but it's just the square of the polynomial here. And using this, well, we get uh, some uh, quite good results. Um, if we compare this with uh, the literature, we need to compare with two types of results. Uh, results from more than, say, one year ago, and results uh, since then. Because as I said in the beginning, um, there was a team from Bochum, uh, so Transit Al, who, uh, who did the same kind of approach for the, the, the global optimization and they get quite good results too, but if we compare with what existed just before this, um, for four by four uh, matrices with eight bit words, uh, the best that existed before was 106 bitwise XORs for an MDS matrix. Uh, Kranz et al found 72 bitwise XORs and, then, uh, and a depth of six, and we managed to do a bit better than that, and actually also have a, var a variety of, uh, of possible depths. And it's exactly the same thing for 4x4 four four, uh, matrices on 4-bit uh, words. So these are very lightweight uh, MDS matrices that can be used uh, in lightweight ciphers now. And for instance, it was used now uh, in the, 
one of the NIST submissions, uh, Saturn. Uh, thank you for your attention. If you have any questions, please. Thank you very much. Any questions? So you told us that your search algorithms uh, became infeasible at 5x5. Five five. Yes. Is there any way to use heuristics or a way to reduce the space to still make further progress? Or It seems complicate for, compli complicated for MDS matrices. Um, we also tried for near MDS matrices, and that maybe with a lot of work could work on 5x5 five five bit as box, uh, uh, matrices. But... Uh, I don't think we can find uh, MDS ones using this. It seems too much. It takes already uh, 2.5 terabytes of RAM for 4x4 four four, uh, matrices, so it's a lot. And 5x5 five five is not feasible. And if you look at these matrices which you found, do they have a special structure because you didn't show us ah, how yes. they look like? Or? Yeah, I should, maybe I should have showed a few uh, examples. Um, yes, uh, some of them quite a few actually uh, for the 4x4 four four case uh, have, uh, for people who know this kind of stuff, have some kind of a generalized Feistel structure, more or less. So may maybe there's something to find there, but we didn't understand exactly why. Maybe that's just the way we, didn't, we put them in the, in the schemes. Who knows? Okay, if there's no more questions, uh, let's thank Sebastian.